Good day ladies and gentlemen, this is our third discussion for Physical Sciences, Grade 11, Term 2. Now previously we discussed refraction and reflection, and we know that the speed of light is equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, and we need to know, moving forward, that a high refractive index is equal to high refraction. Now, this in and of itself is pretty much an explanation of everything we have to speak about today. The higher your refractive index, the more a light ray moving through that medium or into that medium will be refracted. Now, that in and of itself might require a little bit of explanation. If a medium has a high density, that means it has a high refractive index. And that in turn means a high degree of refraction. So what we can say is that substances that are more dense have a higher refractive index and thus have more refraction when light moves through them. A relatively simple example would be to look at light moving through air. Air is not very dense at all. So if air were to move from a vacuum, a vacuum obviously being absolutely nothing, which thus also refracts air or refracts light in absolutely no way, the refraction moving from a vacuum to air, it is pretty much non-existent. But if you were to look at the refraction of something like glass or water being much more dense as higher density, higher refractive index, higher refractive index, more refraction. Now the way that we calculate a refractive index, abbreviated as n, is the speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in our medium. And we abbreviate this as n is equal to c over v. The refractive index of a vacuum is equal to 1. Now a vacuum, being absolutely nothing, has nothing to in any way refract a particle of light or a light ray. Air has a refractive index of 1.003. Water of 1.3 and diamond of 2.4. So you can see something like water, it will refract a light ray. And we talked about that. <sighs> Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. And we talked about that previously about perhaps doing an experiment, dropping a pencil into a cup of water to see how it refracts the light, how it bends the light. Something like a diamond is much more dense than water. As such, higher refractive index, more refraction. This higher refractive index is what is responsible for something that we call brilliance in diamonds, that property that they have with a almost seem to generate light inside of them, where they are very sparkly and they are, well, brilliant. <laughs> that you can Google this perhaps, um, brilliance of diamonds. Um, it is caused by refraction and reflection of light, where one light ray would perhaps enter the diamond, get broken up and refracted, and it looks like that diamond is sparkling from the inside. Now, moving forward, it is very important to remember that this 
a high density is equal to a higher refractive index. Now we also previously did say that if a substance moves from a low to a high density, it is going to bend towards the normal. That being the normal. So low to high, it bends towards. And from a high to a low, it bends away from the normal. Now, we can actually calculate how much this bending is. We can calculate how much this angle of refraction is. And we do that with something called Snell's Law. If we have, just another one, if we have a normal and we have two media, media one and media two, each of course having a different refractive index, oh, I apologize, in one and in two. If the light ray is moving, it of course hits the boundary, and that angle is theta 1. It moves out, or into the different medium, and that angle is theta 2. So the formula that we use would be N1 sine theta 1, is always going to be equal to N2 sine theta 2. So provided that you have the refractive index of both of your media, and you have the angle of the incident ray, you can calculate the angle of the refracted ray, or how much refraction takes place. Now, an example of this perhaps would be if we say we have an incident ray of 30 degrees. So theta 1 is equal to 30 degrees. And it is light passing from water into air. So we have our normal, we have air, and we have water. And that angle right over there is 30 degrees. Now because we are moving from a high to a low density we expect the light ray is going to bend away from the normal. So we can already sort of intuitively determine that our answer, our angle of the refracted ray, is going to be greater than 30 degrees. Now the refractive index of air is equal to 1 and the refractive index of water is equal to 1.33. So all we do, we have a formula, we substitute 1.33 sine 30, because our incident ray is on the side of the water, 30, and the water has a refractive index of 1.33, is equal to... 1 sine theta. We have one unknown, relatively easy to calculate. So our theta 2 is equal to 41.68 degrees, which means that this angle over there is going to be 41.68. And that makes complete sense because we expected that to be larger and 30 degrees. Now there is one final thing that we have left to speak of today and that is the notion of a critical angle. Now critical angle it is defined. The critical angle is equal to the angle of incidence of a light ray, obviously, that provides an angle 
of refraction that is parallel to the boundary between your two media. Now, the best way to explain this is actually with a sketch. So if we have our two media, we will say that this one is more dense, this one is less dense. If we have a light ray moving, and it hits perpendicular, we expect no refraction to happen. If we have a light ray moving, and we hit at an angle, because we are going from a more dense to a less dense, it's going to move away from the normal, it will be going that way. There is also a certain angle where if the light ray hits, it will actually not refract, but rather reflect. And this is what is referred to as internal reflection. But you also, and what we are speaking about, have the critical angle. The critical angle is the specific angle at which the ray hits the boundary and rather than being reflected internally or refracted by moving between the two, it travels parallel to the boundary. And whatever the angle is for this is the critical angle. Now, this means that we can calculate this because the definition of the critical angle is the angle of incidence that provides an angle of refraction that is parallel to the boundary and 90 degrees to the refracted ray. So, we can say that over here, our normal, we have 90 degrees, and our angle of incidence over here is equal to our theta. Now, if you were to use this in what we know from Snell's law, in 1 sine theta is equal to n 2 sine theta 2. What we want is we want to know what this angle is. What this angle is that causes this ray of light to move at 90 degrees to our normal. So, this theta is what we want. And this theta is going to be 90 degrees because the light ray is 90 degrees because it's parallel to our boundary layer. So what we can do is we can say that sine theta the sine theta that we want, is equal to n2 divide by n1 sine 90 degrees. Because for a critical angle, sine will always be 90 degrees, because if it is traveling along the boundary, it will always be 90 degrees there. Now, a relatively easy example of this would be to say calculate the critical angle of a perspex with a refractive index of 1.5. So what we do is we say calculate the critical angle for perspex. Perspex has a refractive index of 1.5. Now let us say that we are using perspex over here, and it's a perspex block in A. So, we are going to have sine theta is equal to N2 
over n1 sine 90 degrees. We are going to use n1 or n2 up here as 1 and n1 as 1.5. This is going to give us n2 being air, refractive index of 1, n1 being 1.5, sine 90 degrees and this ends up giving us a theta of 41.81 degrees that means that if a light ray were to hit the perspex block at 41.81 degrees it will travel along the boundary rather than being reflected internally or refracted by moving out that is pretty much all that we have to talk about today. Um, there is, however, one thing that I would like to demonstrate to you that I sincerely hope I'm going to succeed at. Um, next time we see each other, we will talk a little bit about fiber optics and the applications of reflection and refraction. And that will also be our start of our next discussion about wave fronts and diffraction. Now, what I have over here is a glass prism. It obviously, having a higher optical density than air, is going to refract light. Now, over here, I have a little laser pointer. And what I hope to achieve is if I position this laser just... I don't think the camera is going to get it, though. If I position this laser just right, it should make a line of light going across the page. Just have a look. Okay, there you can sort of see it over there. And if I were to put this prism down, you can see it's actually bending the light. Now, I apologize for this not being the highest quality, but you can very clearly see that the prism is bending this light ray as it is moving past there and that's just a very simple little demonstration if you will because very obviously this prism is more dense than air refraction is going to happen i highly advise you to perhaps have a look at some other youtube videos to illustrate this principle and of course, somebody who can perhaps draw to also draw you some more apt pictures of the critical angle and internal refraction. Not much of an artist, unfortunately. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for our discussion today. Until next time, have a good day.